Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie and Lynn and Oscar and everyone for having me here. Um, I only saw a few hands go up uh, that saw my presentation last year, so I guess I could have just copied it and um, done that. Anyhow, uh, so let's just get right into it. So um, I helped start a company in 2003 called Insider Pages, which was an early version of Yelp. Um, we figured out this thing called SEO I'd never heard of. We ended up getting millions of people to our site, enable us to raise money from Sequoia Capital and SoftBank. We were the hottest company in Silicon Valley. Um, we hired a head of marketing who decided to redesign the website to make it better. And here's what happened to our SEO. Um, went up, went down. Because I didn't really know SEO. I knew enough to be dangerous, and I was incredibly dangerous. Um, uh, I lost my job and was having uh, drinks the night that I lost my job with the head of product for the LA Times who was all excited because he was going to redesign his website. And I said, let me tell you a story about what happened to me today. Um, and then he asked me if I could help him with SEO with his site. And I said, sure, why not? I have nothing else to do. And um, uh, the next thing you know, I became an SEO consultant. And I've been doing it for 13 years now. Um, we've worked with a lot of companies that are in this room, a lot of brands all over the world. I saw an opportunity in the local search market. There was no one doing SEO for directories at the time. Um, so uh, I got to do it. And, um, and uh, we are the opposite of what everyone's been talking about today. We are not a full stack solution. We are a point solution, meaning we're specialists. So there's a lot of people who have SEOs in their companies who are really smart, know stuff. Um, we're the guys you call in when you hit a sticky problem and you're not really sure what's going on. And we don't know any more than you do, but we've seen a lot of weird stuff. So um, uh, originally I was going to talk about local SEO ranking factors. We do every year, we do a big study on Google My Business Factors, and we've done one this year. Um, but I thought, you guys don't really care about that. You, that's too tactical for you. What I thought I'd do is show you what's been happening with Google and how I think it's affecting your businesses and how you can start to, what are the common problems that we see with your guys' businesses? Um, and maybe you can apply them to your customers' businesses too. So um, we're just going to blow through this. So the core things that matter to SEO is right here. Content, like words on your page, the architecture of your site, how the pages link together, um, links from other sites, and then this thing called engagement, which is a, maybe think about it as, do people search your brand in Google? Do they go to your site and stay on it instead of bounce and look at other, other search results? That's kind of what Google's looking for, is engagement. Um, and many years ago, when, we first, when I first started helping directories, this was kind of the playbook. You'd have a standard architecture of your site, a home page, a state page, a city page, a city plus category page, and a business profile page, and you have millions of them. You'd add a bunch of content, which was usually bad reviews. You'd get people to just write, five stars, great coffee shop, or bad plumber. Um, get links from other sites, and you'd see the traffic go through the roof. And you just keep doing that over and over again. That used to work really well. Um, but what's happened? So mobile search, everyone knows, has become a huge, a huge thing. Right now, I'd say across our clients, at least 55 to 60% of all traffic, uh, pretty broadly, is coming from mobile search engines uh, or mobile, mobile uh, devices. Um, and Google sees this, right? Um, Google hired a new CFO from Wall Street in 2015. And that's not significant in and of itself, except Google has always been um, an ads or content company, kind of like Yellow Pages companies. Um, and so this is a, shows a visual of how the ad real estate and Google search results has grown over time from 2010 to 2014. You see these ads get bigger and bigger. Uh, and that's continued to happen, that trend. Um, before I, last week, I, uh, I was looking for a wine tour in uh, Napa Valley near where I live. And I noticed this on my laptop was the result, above the fold. All ads, and then this thing that's called the knowledge panel, which is Google's data that it has on Napa. So this is all Google-controlled stuff. Um, before I get to anything that's like the SEO stuff, like the stuff that clicks to your website. And if you look, this is a mobile result from top to bottom. You can see these are all Sonoma Wine Tour. These are all Google ads before I have to scroll. This is a uh, knowledge panel on Sonoma County, a little scrollable thing. Um, a local pack, going here, local businesses, and then the stuff that gets your site's clicks. So you'd have to scroll a bit to get there. 
Um, and Google has started doing these things called instant answers, uh, which is trying to get people to whatever it is they're looking for as quickly as possible by extracting the um, answer from the websites. Um, and this actually can drive a lot of traffic, but if your answer is easily answerable in one of these things, it will not drive very much traffic. Um, and this is taking over a lot of the search results, particularly on desktop, and pushing everything down. And maybe you've seen this. We call these PAAs. People also ask. So Google knows that people who search, um, how much does it cost to go wine tasting? These are the other things that they regularly search. So Google is trying to anticipate, like, well, where are these people? What's the next thing you're going to go for after you do this and get the answer? And they're putting it right here. And this is all kind of hints as to what you should be targeting for SEO to show up for. And if you've ever clicked on one, what happens is it blows open a little search result like this, and then it adds some more related searches to this. And then you could click here and go to a brand new search result. And so Google's trying to get people to the answer as fast as possible. And, and, and all the different searches all can have multiple intents. So Google's not sure what you want when you do this, so it's going to give you all these things to try to winnow you into the thing that's right for you. Um, they've gotten really good at extracting structured information from your website. So you've probably seen these if you're looking for a concert or something. They basically have an event calendar in the search result for this URL. And you may have seen this also with e-commerce. You can sometimes see a, a list of products right in the search result. All, sometimes you even have, like says, out of stock, in stock, um, all designed to get you to the answer quicker. And these are all things that you can use to your advantage. You can figure out how to get that, much more visible than these. There's a lot of um, what we call SERP. SERP is search engine result page. There's a lot of SERP blindness uh, because a lot of the results are all SEO'd the same way. So everything looks the same. So whatever you can do to um, stick out can help you get the clicks. And we like to help people stick out. Um, you're probably all familiar with this thing called the local knowledge panel, which is the Google My Business page for a business. In this case, Platypus Tours, which is a fairly well SEO'd wine tour business. And this, this Google My Business page is basically the, the web card, as it were, for, um, for this company in Google. Um, and uh, there's a lot of interesting facets of this thing. Some of them you can control, some of them you can't. So you've got photos, reviews, question and answers. Um, we'll talk about this thing in, in a little bit. But it's a pretty comprehensive uh, way to uh, basically understand a local business. And it's changing all the time. It's getting more and more data. And on mobile, this is kind of what it looks like. Pretty similar. Um, you know, pretty typical local business thing. Um, this thing started popping up a couple years ago. Uh, it basically shows how busy your location is at any given time of the day, any day of the week. And so this is amazingly helpful. So I have to go to the Department of Motor Vehicles next week to renew my license, my driver's license, and I know that Mondays at 4 p.m. now are the least busy. And that's when I'm going to go. And basically what we think Google is doing is people carrying Android phones into locations, they're tracking them and, uh, and putting this up here. And we think this is a proxy for what I was talking about, engagement. You can imagine if Google sees that a restaurant has, is really busy at 6 o'clock or something all the time, and you're looking for a popular restaurant, this might be a proxy for a popular restaurant or a not popular restaurant. These things are amazing. Recently, Google's had the, uh, the ability to create a post on your Google My Business page. It takes about a minute to publish it. You can add a video, you can add a picture, a link. Um, uh, and what we found, we do this a lot for multi-location clients, is it doesn't necessarily help you rank better yet. It probably will at some point. What it does is help people who are already searching for your business engage with it better. So as an example, if you're a mattress store and having a sale, you might put a big sale thing right up here. And that will get a click, much more likely than just a Google My Business page. So Google My Business posts, if you are guys that are servicing SMBs and doing Google Business stuff with them and you're not testing this stuff right now, you're leaving a lot of easy clicks on the table. Uh, most businesses have no idea that you can actually get text messages through Google My Business uh, from mobile. So 
basically on my Google My Business page, you can text me. I get a text message. It sends an automatic um, message to me and I can respond. Um, it's a really uh, great little product for uh, companies that want to engage with their customers. It's really easy to enable and really easy to use. Um, this is the craziest thing they've rolled out in the last year, Q&A. Um, basically on every Google My Business page, you can now ask questions about the business and then anyone can answer them and there's no moderation. So um, look, this is a question about Walmart or service or experience. They are slow and lazy. Um, so brands don't even know this is happening because no one, no one looks at their website and no one looks at Google, their Google My Business pages. So the bigger the brand you are, and this applies to you guys too, you should go look at your Google My Business page and see, are people talking poorly about you right now? Are people in, who are called local guides, um, are they answering questions about your business for you in a way that you'd rather they did not? Um, this is a big, big problem uh, that most brands have no clue about. And again, it's an opportunity for people who are servicing brands to help them mitigate this problem. So what's going on? Um, so Google's been training us. This is a, uh, a graph of searches for the word restaurant and searches for restaurant plus a zip code. And what it shows is restaurant plus zip code searches are going way down and just restaurant searches are going way up. Because people with phones, they don't have to put a zip code in. It knows where you are. Um, there's still a lot of zip code queries. But most queries now are just like restaurant, pizza, plumber, whatever. Um, another good example, you might have previously said, hey, I, I'm looking for a Houston weather forecast. Now you're just saying, is it going to rain today? What's the weather? Right? Um, so what's going on, right, is voice search has just become this thing. And um, Google is trying to be everywhere. Uh, and so Google Home, Alexa, Siri, all these these voice search apps, Google has been preparing to deliver results for voice search. And that's what all those instant answers, those big boxes at the top, those are all designed to answer a question that someone's going to put into a voice search. And so if you rank for one of those things at the top for a question search, that's what you're going to hear on Google Home. Um, let's go here. So what's going on? What are they going to do next? It feels like it's going to this. This was an experiment that Google did last year, uh, or maybe earlier this year, where you typed what time is it, and there were no organic results, meaning the, 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 the web search results. And that was the first time anyone could remember there were no links to websites outside of ads. Now, there's no need for a, you to click to a site on what time it is. It just really isn't. But it was indicative, we think, of what Google was trying to figure out, like, Maybe we don't need to send traffic to websites so much. Because um, if we can answer it on Google, why wouldn't we do that? So here's kind of what we think is happening. In the beginning, there were just a lot of web results and some ads. Then there were these things called knowledge panels, Google My Business things, what we call Google O and O's. They started to take over a little bit, but there's still tons of web results and a lot of ads. We think this is kind of the new normal. Lots of ads, lots of Google owned and operated properties, and some traditional web results. And depending on the search result, the search query, that blue thing might be tiny, might be huge, but more and more of this Google owned and operated stuff is going to be everywhere because Google thinks that it can do everything better than you can do. It can get the answer to someone faster, more efficiently, better. And for your customers, what does this mean? It means that a lot of the um, business that they're going to transact is going to happen off of Google. Um, this was a study done in the US. Uh, uh, various KPIs across, I can't remember how many businesses, but where did they come from? Contact form fills, click to call, et cetera. 70% came from Google, 25% from the web page, and then other sources in the US. So a lot of activities happening on Google. And we see this, we see this with big brands and small brands too. Um, and 
the local results now are changing at a pace that has been, I, I can't tell you, in the last year, it's been insane how many different tests we've seen Google running. How many different times someone will say, has anyone seen this before? There's a new thing here. Um, this is a, someone, <laughs> some masochist tracking um, the different changes in Google's local results over time. And what you can see, first of all, there's a ton of them. Second of all, you see they're accelerating. Why is that? Well, I think they, they never really monetized local that well before, and now they need to. Uh, according to one blogger, there have been 60 changes this year alone in, in Google search results, in local search. But I bet that's wildly undercounting. In the last two weeks, these things were spotted. So booking for a barbershop, booking has been around, but not for barbershops. Um, this uh, fall collection, which is like a product scrollable thing, um, taking the images from a Google My Business page and just making a scrollable carousel. Um, we saw one with video scrolls. So just the iterations just like crazy. And so the local, and the people I've been talking to at the conference, they, they probably heard me say the same thing over again. The context of the search engine results are changing. Um, what a local search is is different. This is now a local search. This is a search for a Ford F-150 truck. Google shows a bunch of different URLs from Ford.com that all have a different intent. One's like, tell me all about the truck. One's, what about the specific model? The other one is like, where do I, where do I buy it? Well, how do I get it? And then they have CarMax and CarGurus, which are these like national, local directory sites, basically. Um, and this is more and more becoming local search. This is a local search. This is a search for mattresses. This is above the fold. This is what shows up. Sorry, sorry for the bad coloring, but the red stuff is ads. So you get these, um, these are called product listing ads, regular Google ads. Um, and then this is a local pack. So the G means that Google kind of owns this, this owned and operated. This is above the fold for mattresses, which is an e-commerce query, but has now become a local query. And then the green is the kind of free organic results. Blue, that's a news result about mattresses that goes to Google News. Um, more ads, related products, um, related searches. So I can't remember, like nine or, there's nine or ten different Google units in this search result for mattresses. Same thing for TVs and pretty much any other kind of product you can buy locally. So what happens when you're when your SERPs go local, this is what happens. We work for a, uh, a fairly large brand, Sam's Club. There, I told you. Sam's Club. Um, Sam's Club freaked out one day because their local traffic went boom, down to the ground. What had happened was Google had started showing Google My Business pages for Sam's Club across more of their search results. So the traffic, instead of going to the website, now is going to the Google My Business page. But they weren't tracking the Google My Business page. And so they didn't know what was going on. And this is happening across, across search results, across brands. So what Google's decided is, oh, I can just give you the phone number and driving directions in Google. You don't need to go to the website to get that. Um, and brands are getting caught kind of unaware. And it's actually maybe not a bad thing. It's just they don't know what's happening because they're not measuring it. They're not tracking it. Um, so remember I talked about the ranking factors. I figured Good time to just throw these in. Um, here's, how, here's how things play out with the ranking factors for Google My Business. Apologize for the bad color. Um, there are some key things. Google My Business, having reviews, having photos, and having the keyword in your business name that you're trying to rank for are like the main things you need to worry about in Google My Business. Get a lot of reviews and get, keep getting them. Um, on your website, the page your Google My Business page links to, you want to have a lot of words on it. It doesn't, almost doesn't matter what the words are. You want to have a lot of words on it. Um, you want to have images. Google just updated an image algorithm, so having a really good image at the top of your page helps you rank better. Um, and then links from other sites. You basically want to have relevant links from relevant sites so if you're about plumbing, you want a link from plumbing.com. 
Um, you want a lot of links, as many as you can get. And then you want to have those links have the city and the keyword in the anchor text, the link text. And in a lot of ways, this is no different than normal SEO, but it has a local flavor because it's got the city in it. Um, and that's a high level distillation, but what's really interesting about this year's data, which we haven't published yet, so you're getting the first ever thing here, is surprise, surprise, the ranking factors vary by vertical. Don't worry about what each of these things is. It's just bar charts making it look different. Every, it, what it means is that if you're in legal, reviews are probably more important, right? If you're in, I don't know, looks like grocery. I don't know why grocery has more links. Or retail, you need more links. And what that says is Google has different rules for different verticals. Um, so you need to understand the verticals you're in and what the rules are. So you're like, great. This sucks. We're getting rid of, Google's getting rid of traffic. Like, I, I'm dying. But you're not. These are, these are sites that are all kind of like your sites, local directories for more or less. And according to one of the tools we use, this is how much traffic they get on a daily basis, or a monthly basis, actually, I think. Um, uh, so there's still a ton of traffic to be had. It's not like Google's taking over and killing everything. Um, they're taking the best stuff, probably. Um, you're fighting amongst your competitors for the crumbs, but there's a lot of crumbs. And so part of our job is to figure out how to get the crumbs and, I don't know, make a cookie. Um, this is a story I've been telling a lot because we think it's um, indicative of what's been happening across search results. The intent of the search results changes. So Google ranks stuff uh, it doesn't sometimes know what you mean when you search graphic designer. Are you looking for a, to hire a graphic designer? Are you a graphic designer looking for a job? Are you looking for what is a graphic designer? I don't know. So we work with a site called Upwork. It's a freelancer market. Um, they used to rank up here for a graphic designer. Then one day they stopped. And indeed, the job site ranked up here for a graphic designer. And we saw this happen across a lot of different searches, PHP programmer, yellow page sales rep, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, and what it said to us was Google had decided that the intent of the searcher, for the most part, was looking for a job, not looking to hire someone. And so when that happens to you, suddenly you're kind of screwed because you have a page of a list of graphic designers, and how am I going to get... But what Google did was put a local pack of graphic designers up there. So they don't, oh, I don't want a graphic designer near me. So how do you compete with that? You have to, do you become a job site? Maybe that's one way to do it. Um, well, I think you have to kind of think outside your box. Um, I think you have to have a different approach for each vertical in a way. Um, and this is, I think these two companies are kind of inspiring ways. So Facebook, right, has these different companies that all do kind of different but related things, except for Oculus, I have no idea what that does. Um, TripAdvisor has all these different brands for different verticals. I don't think they did this for as an SEO play, except TripAdvisor has SEO like baked into the core of their business. Um, but it clearly works for SEO, because each of those experiences is much more relevant than the other for the specific vertical. And that's one of the challenges, is how can you prove algorithmically to Google that you're relevant for the intent of the search? Uh, Someone was asking about this slide. Um, I love showing it. Um, now we're getting into the, what are the typical things we see you crazy clients do? Um, this is my favorite. A lot of you guys spend a lot of money on pay-per-click. A lot of brands do. And pay-per-click guys are bonused on performance, usually. And the easiest thing to get performance from is to buy ads against your brand queries. So if you're Ford, you buy people searching for Fords. And guess what happens is it cannibalizes your organic traffic. This is organic traffic for a real Fortune 500 company. This is their paid search traffic for a real Fortune 500 company. And you can see when the paid search guy started getting crazy, they saw about a 33% decline in SEO. And um, what do they do? We, we estimated they were losing about 50K a week. This is actually about, I think, six months old. Um, they uh, or now this is two years old. Um, last week we uncovered this with another client 
um, they were losing about a million and a half dollars a week on this. Um, so if your SEO traffic is going down and you have any kind of brand that someone's actually searching for, first thing to do is check your ad spend. If it's gone up and that's gone down, it's probably that. Um, you need to get your SEO teams into the mindset of using this stuff strategically, thinking about how people search and what shows up. So example, just adding the word best to your pages, so best shows up, probably generates more clicks than not the best. Um, this is an example of yellowpages.com really pushes it in their taxonomy. So best 30 taxis, best cheap taxi, cab service, cheap cab, affordable airport. They clearly are trying to own every type of search for taxi. This is a double-edged sword though. If you have a strong enough site, meaning a lot of links, you can do this. If you have a weak site, this will get you kind of um, diluted by Google. They won't dig it. And so you have to be careful, you have to test. Um, being strategic about what's in there. So Thumbtack puts free estimates in their title tag. And guess what, people like that. I was talking to the Yelp SEO guy last week. They, um, when they're uh, told that their calls that they're sending to advertisers are down, they add the phone number into the title tag of the, their profile pages. So it shows up in Google. And when that happens is it ends up actually maybe making them rank not as well for stuff, but they get more calls. So they use SEO like super strategically to meet business goals. And so you should need to think about, well, what can we do? How, how do we do that? Um, now we're going to go through a list of horror stories. Um, a lot of you never use your sites. I wouldn't have a job if any of you used your sites. This is a directory in the US, a health directory. Um, the, it, you can't see it, but the, you'd click around and there'd be two different designs on the site. Because I guess they got tired of redesigning the site and stopped on page one million or something. Um, and then left the rest of the site as it was. Um, they had a find a hospital link in the nav and a hospital link in the nav. Like, what's the difference, right? Um, and that may seem like a bad user experience, but it's also a bad SEO experience. Bad user experiences and bad SEO usually translates to bad SEO experience. Um, if you're going to redesign, so Fabian, you're a genius for, for not rebranding because um, even though, actually, people don't know, Fabian is like a killer SEO. Killer. Um, uh, but this is a company, uh, a startup actually, that uh, decided to rebrand for whatever reason, and this is what happened to their traffic. Um, because there's just a lot of stupid little tricky things that if you don't know what you're doing, you can screw up your site. And it's SEO bugs are the worst because you, if you have a bug with your login form or something, you can fix that in a day and it's done. If you have a bug with your SEO, you could fix it and it may take six months for it to work again. It may take six years. Um, but you can't fix it. This is a real estate site that redesigned here and lost, I don't know, whatever percentage of traffic and business it was. Um, I think we started working with them around here and just kind of gave them a plan and guess what? Their traffic is now back. It's not like it was magic. We just, there's just a ton of stupid details that no one wants to pay attention to. Um, and so you've got to get your teams in the habit of paying attention to stupid details for the SEO. Um, a lot of you are, uh, maybe your um, product people or your technology people are like, we've got to build in this new technology, like Angular. This is a site uh, that was all hot about this Angular technology. They redesigned their site to look amazingly cool and be really fast but they didn't realize that Google couldn't see anything that they did. So when they turned it live, they lost about a million people a month, something like that, and their jobs. Um, this is a site that decided they wanted to do an Angular site and hired us to help them. Again, not that we're magicians or anything, we just 
kind of have worked with this stuff. And so we put together a plan. I think, when did they launch it? I think they launched it around here, here, in November. And they are now at record traffic. Uh, because they had a plan and they realized this was a complicated, ridiculous thing that would kill them if they didn't do it right. Um, and so having people who can do it right can help. Um, this is a, a Sam's Club would shoot me for showing this, but this is um, what happens when you have a very complicated technology stack and you're not really sure what's going on. In this case, you can't see this URL, but if you searched Sam's Club for a day, you got prodi.samsclub.com, which was their development server. And if you clicked on it, the site actually worked. It looked like samsclub.com, except when you tried to buy something. So they lost a million dollars or something on that. And that was really hard to fix. And it happened because they didn't have good technical processes to stop things from this, like this from happening. Um, and Google is out of control. This is a list of all departments in Sam's Club that Google auto-populates on their Google My Business page. And so if you click on Sam's Club Optical Center, it took you to an empty optical page, a category page. And you know, this is like not a page you want anyone landing on. And Sam's Club could probably have prevented this by not having a zero results optical page. But Google is doing this automatically, especially if you have scale sites. This stuff happens like a million times a day. And so when everyone's afraid that Google's so amazingly smart and taking over, I'm like, this is what they do. Like, do not be super afraid of Skynet. Uh, you know, it can't even unclog a toilet, right? Um, Geo-targeting is a problem, especially for your types of sites. Uh, this is uh, lawyers.ca, a Canada lawyers directory. And if you went to the site, you would see here are all the Canadian provinces we serve. But if you looked at what Google saw, US, because they were using the same code base as their US-based site and didn't realize that Google would just merge the two things because of geocoding. So we're like, that's why half your traffic is going to Colorado or something. Yeah. Um, Duplicate content. A lot of you guys get tempted to create new sites that are basically duplicates of your old site. Same data, different colors or something. Um, but that can work until it doesn't work. You gotta be careful with that stuff. Uh, last year I showed this slide. There's no substitute for having content. And these are a couple of sites in the States. And um, I thought it'd be interesting to show the number of articles they published in, in 2017 and then what they're sh publishing now. And then I added UpCouncil, which is a startup that's heavily investing in, in uh, lawyer content, very cheaply made lawyer content. And you can see if you look at their traffic, just went up incredibly in 2018. So investing in content is kind of like, it's kind of like what it used to be investing in listings was the cost of doing business for SEO and directories. Now it's investing in content. So you've got to start answering questions. You know, you've got to pay attention to this stuff. What are people asking? You've got to have an answer if you want to get that traffic. But you got to be careful with your content. <laughs> it's, it's one of the fun things about SEO. This is a um, regional foot doctor in California who had content about everything to do with um, bunions, I guess. And um, on August 1st, a update that we're calling the medic update came out in Google, and this is what happened to their traffic. Because they kind of had content that was all over the place and not very focused. And, competed with itself, and Google thought it, yeah, this is kind of a low quality site. So you need to have good content. This is an example of a regional um, multi-location retailer. Uh, we rewrote all the content on hundreds of their, uh, hundreds, maybe like We did it. Because we were kind of giving Google what it wanted. You need to get into the reviews game. If you're not in the reviews game, you're missing out on Buku traffic. Um, Google shows these stars sometimes from your site if you have reviews, those get clicks. You can show up in the knowledge panel as a, um, you can review yourself by the way and show up in your own knowledge panel. Um, uh, so if you don't have a review strategy now, if your customers don't have a review strategy now, you should be investing heavily in this stuff because this is what Google really likes. Backlinks are critical. All the stuff I'm talking about are like, we like fixing up a car, fixing up a, a sports car. Links are the gas that makes the car go. Um, this is just a link graph 
for this tour, these um, wine tours. Platypus tours is the number one guy. The blue line is how many links they have. It doesn't always work this way, but it tends to correlate. The more links, the better you rank. Especially if you're in really competitive uh, categories, um, there's just no substitute in a lot of ways. This is a great strategy. Uh, TripAdvisor actually pioneered this. We just saw them doing it quickly and then claimed that we pioneered it. Um, so adding near me pages is the easiest way to get like 2% more traffic to your site. Um, Google and Apple all kind of append near me to local searches. Type pizza, it always says near me. Um, just putting up a page that says best wine tasting near me and has a couple of words on it. For depending on the site, uh, again, the, the Yelp guy told me they put this up a few months ago. It's generating, I think, 2 million page views a month or something like that. It took them five seconds to design this page and put it up. So you guys could go home and tell your team, hey, add near me. Um, one of the funniest things I think about this industry is that you guys, as a as a cohort, are some of the worst marketers around. I'm sure you're okay, but for companies that sell marketing services, you, you don't really market yourselves very well. Um, or at least you don't take advantage of all this stuff. So as an example, this is a stupid post I wrote in 2007. It has a clunky SEO headline, how to add a business to interrelate Yellow Pages listing for free, which I was trying to rank for all these different things. How to add a business to Yellow Pages, internet Yellow Pages, free listing, all that kind of stuff. And I just, it's just a list of US directories with the page you could sign up. This took me about three hours to write, maybe, in 2007. This page has generated, I believe, maybe 300,000 page views over the time, or visits. Um, uh, I put a Yext affiliate link up there several years ago. It's generated hundreds of thousands of Yext affiliate dollars. Thanks, Yext. Um, it took me three hours to write. 10 years ago. I have a lot of pages like this on my site, as you can imagine. Um, this is, by the way, also a strategy for you guys to get customers. Like, people who do what I do are trying to get the attention of people who are your customers. And so we put up stuff like this because we know that's what they're searching for. So figuring out what your customers are searching for, not the head terms like digital marketing service, which everyone wants to rank for, but more really specific things. That's what you need to do on your site. So, basically you're getting squeezed. We all know that, it's been happening. Um, but I think there's still like plenty of opportunity for people who want to invest in this stuff and kind of grab as much as you can out of the search results. Uh, I think a general directory can rank just fine for a lot of things, can get a lot of traffic. Yellowpages.com gets a lot of traffic and it's just, it's a directory site just like your directory site. Um, but I think more and more you're going to have to, if you see fluctuations, like in we're not getting as much traffic in auto, you might want to think about how can we revise um, the experience on our site to be more, more relevant to auto, what you see showing up in auto or in home services. Um, and I don't, think, I don't think Google is your competition. Your competition is your competition. Right now, Google's already won that thing. Facebook won that other thing. You're now trying to beat, you know, beat the other guy across the street. The small agencies like me who are like biting at your ankles. You know, the big guys who are like, you know, your sales guys are going head to head against. Um, I think that's, that's, um, that's who you need to think about if you, if you want to work in SEO. Um, so this is like our, we say this all the time. Most of you guys, most clients everywhere, it's not just you. They never want to invest in this stuff because it's supposed to be free. But it subsidizes every other channel you guys have. The minute it goes in the tank, it puts pressure on every other channel. And suddenly, you're at a runway. Um, so I don't want to overhype it. <laughs> you know, it's not the be all and end all. It, 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 it it's not, shouldn't be your number one priority in your business, maybe. But it's a fact of life if you want to have a website that gets traffic and does business. Um, and with that, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew.
we'll take uh, questions. All right, we got where Lynn, you got that? Okay. Hi, Yuri. Hello, David. Uh, just a question for you. Uh, obviously, uh, GMB takes up some fairly valuable real estate on Google. Um, what do you think uh, Google, like, I, uh, what their master plan is for GMB, how they intend to monetize that real estate, and secondly, uh, evolving uh, discussions around GMB and it may kill the need for websites in certain verticals, and your thoughts on that as well. So uh, I'm not sure how they'll monetize GMB other than maybe adding, you know, they clearly have all these partnerships with booking engines. Maybe, Brendan, do you guys have a partnership with GMB? Like, can I get, like, so there's all these, there's all these um, technologies showing up on GMB now, and I'm sure they're monetizing it. There's like a, a pay to play kind of thing going on. Um, We had, um, to that point, um, the head of, or the guy, the lead developer of GMB yeah. spoke at Cinder in Dubrovnik a couple of weeks ago. They are investing huge amounts into GMB and yeah. there will be a ton of further, what I would call advertising type products to right. come off the back of GMB. Yeah, so local service ads appear to be the closest thing to monetizing GMB right now, yeah. these home service ads. Um, uh, but what we know, like, I've, so I've talked to some of these GMB guys too, and they quite frankly say, well, you know, we want the search result page really just to be a complete, if you're talking about hiring a, a service pro, a complete like end-to-end -end solution for hiring a service pro. Everything you need to know. How to screw in a light bulb, how to hire someone to do the electric, you know, all that kind of stuff in one page. And if you don't have to leave that page to get it done, that they're like, that's the solution. And I don't think they're doing that to try to kill any of you guys there. They're just like, that's the right way to do it. Um, so I think that kind of thing will just keep happening. I think one of the comments I, w I would make that came out of that discussion at Cinder, because when you talk about the competition to this industry, one of the, you know, a lot of people say, oh, Google's the competition. It's not. The, 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 the street corner guy who's building websites and selling SEO, that's the real competition to this industry. And, and I think that's where Google it, that's probably the market that Google's going after with GMB. I think they're, they're the guys who should be all threatened by GMB, not, not us publishers. Well, we, I, have a, I have a ridiculous theory, actually, that one of the things Google might do is kind of try to Uberfy um, leads. So you can imagine if you're a, um, I don't know, a, a, a contractor and you have a guy who you know, works for you and is pretty skilled at contracting, um, Google has a lot of data on pricing already and volume and work times. Imagine, they can be like, hey, to that guy, hey, do you want to buy leads from us? We see that you're you know, part of the system. And that guy could just start getting leads without you from GMB at some point. I, I totally believe that'll happen. Don't most small businesses only uh, populate a fraction of their GMB profile? I mean... I, I don't know what the data is, but yeah. It's, but I think it, it's, but, so is there an opportunity for businesses like this to help small businesses optimize their GMB? Yeah, yeah there's... Um, I mean, this is the... This is, so this is where SEO has kind of shifted to being 99% helping you with your website, and now it's like 50% your website and 50% manipulating things like Google, Google My Business, working inside of Google systems or Apple systems and trying to affect something. And so... Just doing Google My Business posts for your, your clients, like I said, is like the easiest way to get more clicks and show performance. Um, it, it's, it, and Google My Business as a whole is all, such a screwed up system that just maintaining it for your clients can be a full-time business. Um, it's a little harder to show the value of that, like, but when they get, so we work with AutoNation, the 300 car dealer website, or car dealers in the country, in the US, and Every other week, they send us photos from their Google My Business page. It's like cat pictures or a slice of pizza because the machine doesn't know what to do and it publishes a cat picture on an auto dealer's page. And someone has to go in and get rid of that thing. So there's a ton of opportunity in just kind of fixing what Google keeps breaking. Any other questions? We got one right here. Hey, Andrew, how are you? Trivia. <laughs> Um, what's your thoughts on AMP for directory websites or focusing on just speeding up your 
website with a, a better tech stack. Sure. Uh, so for those who don't know, Daniel was asking about Google AMP, um, which is Accelerated Mobile Page. It's a Google technology they've supposedly open source that just uh, you host your pages on Google and it's a really fast experience on mobile. Um, and they've been trying to get publishers all over the place to, to implement it. Um, the pluses of it is it's relatively simple implementation uh, and your pages get really fast. The negative of it is you're now hosted on, you're totally captive by Google's systems. Um, they own your website, basically. And um, it's gotten a lot better, but it's limited, and things you can put on it are limited because it has to be really fast. So um, we, there are certain verticals where you have to have an AMP page, like uh, uh, recipes. If you're a recipe site and you don't have an AMP page, you're not going to show up in any of those mobile video or image carousels. It's just the way it is. If you're a movie review site, I think it's the same way. Uh, so again, it gets back to like, well, look at the verticals you're going after and are they promoting AMP, like prioritizing AMP? But if you have a good tech stack and you can make your pages really quick, we'd be like, do that, don't go on AMP. Um, but it's, so you got, it's kind of a case by case basis. I mean, do you see a lot of AMP in Australia? No, not really. It yeah. hasn't really popped up too much. And a lot of the time you see them pop up and then drop off quite quickly. Yeah. But we just trialed it with a locksmith um, a couple of weeks ago and he jumped up like five spots within like two weeks. Hmm. So, so in maybe in low competition markets, it could be uh, like, a, like a make or break kind of thing. And, but, it, but I don't know if it was AMP, right? Or it just was a fast page. Well, we did change his tile tag and we did a couple other things. So it's always hard to know when you fire the machine gun. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. That's another one. Uh, if you guys are doing <laughs> SEO testing, that was a perfect example of, of, you know, you need to do a real test if you want to. Then sometimes you can't really wait. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a sense of, um, is there so many ads just like, you know, when, what you see in, before you scroll is mostly ads, that people are now sort of treating ads as search results as, instead of ads? Uh, yeah, I that? mean, that's been the way it has been since they started, is yeah. that Google maintained that the ad is actually the best result mm -hmm. because it's the one that's almost guaranteed to be targeted at the search query. Right. Um, and so, yeah, ads are content. Uh, the percentage, uh, I, I don't know what the latest studies are that the percent of clicks that ads get, uh, but certainly it's more as more ads show up on the page. And in eye tracking studies, what they've shown is that in local searches, your eye goes first to the ad, then to the Google knowledge thing on the right, then to the Google booking widget right below it, and then to the organic results. So, um, so yeah, ads are still a great place uh, to be seen and get clicks for sure. Last chance. Okay, we'll wrap right. that up. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you. Appreciate um, it. Uh, quick announcement. We have